Okay, today we're going to talk about matrix mu multiplication. We have two basic types. One is with a scalar and one is with a matrix. Keep in mind a scalar is just a fancy word for a number. So when you multiply a number by a matrix, then you're going to distribute that number to each element in your matrix. Just basically it's the distributive property. And remember that our little subscripts are telling us exactly what row and column. Our matrices are always given to us rows by columns that each element is. So if I have a scalar 3 on this matrix, I'm going to do 3 times 8 to get 24, 3 times A to get 3A, 3 times 12 to get 36, 3 times B to give me 3B, 3 times negative 20 is negative 60, and 3 times C is 3C. So simple distributive property, however our problems won't just be multiply this scalar, it'll be a little more involved. So the first example we have, given matrix A and matrix B, what is the value of 3A minus 2B? Now, be careful, you don't want to do too much in your head because it's easy to make a just a careless mistake. So I have 3 times 2, 3 times 8, 3 times negative 3. I have 3 times negative 1, 3 times 5, and 3 times 2. And now I have to do 2B. So I'm going to do 2 times negative 1, 2 times 0, 2 times 5, 2 times 0, 2 times 6, 2 times negative 4. I'm sorry, 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. I was jumping ahead there. Okay, and then we subtract, just like we talked about earlier, you subtract the corresponding elements. So I'm going to have 6 minus a negative 2 which is 8. 24 minus 0 is 24. Negative 9 minus 10 is negative 19. Negative 3 minus 0, negative 3. 15 minus 6 is 9. And 6 minus a negative 4 is 10. And there we have it. Okay, let's talk real quickly about the properties of scalar multiplication and what we have. Um, remember we discussed this earlier. If I multiply a scalar by a matrix and I still get a matrix, that that's called the closure property. Okay, if I change, if I have two scalars outside of a matrix, then I can multiply the scalars together and then multiply by the matrix or I can multiply that scalar by the matrix and then multiply by the scalar again. But most importantly, what's different is what's inside my parentheses, and that is my associative property. The next one I think you're all familiar with quite well. Whether the scalar is on the left, um, uh, you have a scalar times two matrices being added together, you can multiply each matrix by that scalar. So you distribute the scalar among it. You can also distribute the matrices to each scalar. All right, and that would be an example of our distributive property. And then we have one times any matrix is that given matrix that is the multiplicative identity. And then last, zero times any matrix is going to give you the zero matrix. That's what that means. Because remember, a scalar times a matrix is still a matrix. So make sure you realize that this is actually referring to the zero matrix. Okay? And this is our zero property of multiplication. Or multiplicative property of zero, whichever. Zero property of multiplication. Okay? So hopefully, 
Let's keep going. Let's go to the next example that we have. All right, solving a matrix equation with scalars. So, um, and we did this a little bit yesterday, um, but if I have three times a matrix minus two times a matrix equals to another matrix, if I want to get this by itself, then of course I can add this to both sides of my equation. So that being said, I'm going to say that 3x equals uh, this existing matrix that I have, 17, negative 13, negative 7, and 0, plus 2 times that other matrix. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute that scalar. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 7 is is 14 and 2 times 0 is 0. So when you look at that, keep in mind that negative became positive because I added it to the other side. I added it to both sides of my equation to clear it and then I went ahead and distributed my scalar. So when I add my two matrices together, that's going to give me 17 plus negative 2, negative 13 plus 10, negative 7 plus 14, and 0 plus 0. Then, just as you would think, I can multiply both sides by that same number of 1 third, okay? <clears throat> In which case, I am left with my matrix answer. So as I distribute that scalar among my matrices, 15 divided by 3, negative 3 divided by 3, 7 divided by 3, and 0 divided by 3. And there we have our solution. Okay, the next type that we have is matrix multiplication. And this is probably different from anything you've seen before. So keep in mind that, they remember this tells us exactly what row and column that we're in. This is my first row and this is my first column that's going to give me, in my new matrix, the first row and the first column. Okay? Because keep in mind when you look at this, I have, you know, one row, a row times a column. When you add those products together, you get one element. First row, second column will give me first row, second column answer. Okay? So let's go through it so you can see how this is going to work. So, A, B... is going to be 2, negative 1, 3, and 4 times negative 3, 1, 0, and 2. All right, so my first element, and I'm going to write this out long ways, okay? It's looking like this. And I'm going to put blanks here so you can see where these are coming from. But when I multiply 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2, I'm going to get a 2 by 2. Okay? This is the first row, first column. So to multiply these two, I'm going to have 2 times negative 3 plus negative 1 times 0. That was the first row times the first column. Now go to the first row, second column, that's going to be 2 times 1 plus negative 1 times 2. Go to the second row, first column, to get second row, first column. So that's 3 times negative 3 plus 4 times 0. And then... I have the second row, second column, so I'm going to use the second row and the second column, and that's going to give me 3 times 1 plus 4 times 2. And so I simplify that. Negative 6 plus 0 is uh, my answer of negative 6. 2 minus 2 is 0. 
negative 9 plus 0 is negative 9 and 3 plus 8 is 11 and there we have the product of A times B. Now let's look at B times A. Um, I would say especially because it's new it's really important to write these matrices next to each other because this is definitely something that's easy to um, mix things up. I actually put my fingers on the numbers as I go down because it, it's like I said easy to mix up. Okay, so we'll write it out again like we did the last time. Um, 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2 is going to give me a 2 by 2. And I'm just writing out each product for you so you can see. This is the first row, first column. So I'm going to take the first row and the first column. Negative 3 times 2. Negative 3 times 2 plus 1 times 3. Then I go to first row, second column. <clears throat> so that's negative 3 times negative 1 plus 1 times 4. Then I'm going to, this is my second row, first column. Second row, first column. 0 times 2 plus 2 times 3. And then this is my second row, second column. Second row, second column. 0 times negative 1 plus 2 times 4. So what does that give me? We simplify each of these and I have negative 6 plus 3 which is negative 3. I have 3 plus 4 which is 7. 0 plus 6 and 0 plus 8. And there I have the product of B times A. What do you notice about A times B and B times A? Okay, uh, That's kind of the question that they're asking here in Part C. Is matrix multiplication commutative? Does it matter if I switch the order in the way that I multiply the matrices? So hopefully you can see from this example that matrix multiplication is not commutative. So be careful. It's really important the way that you um, write down your problems. Okay? Now, we just multiplied two square matrices, two by two. One of the things that's important about a matrix is when you multiply two matrices, M times N matrix and an N times P matrix, your result is always an M times P matrix. In other words, the end of the first one and the beginning of the second one have to be the same or you cannot multiply them. And the answer is going to be the first one times the last one, M times P. So in this next example, we are just looking to see if the product exists. So this matrix is two rows by two columns. It is a two by two. This matrix is one row by two columns, so it is a one by two. And this is two rows by three columns, so it's a two by three. So they want to know if A times B exists. So that means A is a two by two and B is a one by two. Are these two the same? And they're not equal to each other? So this answer is the product does not exist. All right, look at B times A. B times A is a 1 by 2 and a 2 by 2. These do exist. That works out, so the answer is yes. And if you want to know, your answer will be a 1 by 2. That is not what that says. Okay, yes, and your answer will be a 1 by 2 just to give you a heads up. All right, how about A times C? A is a 2 by 2. C is a 2 by 3. These two numbers, they are the same, so my answer is yes. And my resulting matrix will be a 2 by 3. 
All right, C times A. C is a 2 by 3. A is a 2 by 2. So you look at your two inner numbers, and you can see that they are not equal. So my answer is no, I can't multiply those two matrices. All right, last one, B times C. B is a 1 by 2. C is a 2 by 3. These two numbers are the same. So yes, I can multiply those two matrices, and my answer will be a 1 by 3. 1 by 3. Didn't write that normally. Okay, so let's talk about our properties of matrix multiplication, and then we'll do a few problems, and then we're done. Okay, so again, if I multiply two matrices, do I get a matrix? I do. It's called that closure property. Uh, if I multiply two matrices, okay, what's different here is the order is the same, A, B, C, A, B, C, but it doesn't matter if I multiply the first two together first or the last two together first. So that, of course, is my associative property. Then we'll call that associative property of multiplication. Uh, we have a matrix multiplied by the sum of two matrices. And actually, you can see that that's our distributive property. And it doesn't matter if that matrix is on uh, the left or the right. But notice when you distribute, you still have to keep them in order. So A times B is AB plus AC. But if it's on the right side, then it would be BA plus CA. And we already saw that you, it matters which way you multiply them. So this is an example of our distributive property. And then last but not least, the zero matrix times the matrix is the same as the matrix times the zero matrix, which of course is the zero matrix. So again, remember, when they write it like this, this is actually a matrix and not a scalar. And this is, as we have discussed before, the zero property of multiplication. All right, let's do a few examples and then we'll be done. So it's always nice to check it out um, when you're doing these. So I'm going to go ahead and write it so we get practice. This is a 1 by 2, and this is a 2 by 1. So I do this. One, I make sure I can actually do it. And then number two, I know that my answer's got to be a 1 by 1, which looks like the absolute value of x. But the point is, it is one answer. Negative 9 times, I mean, well, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 plus 25 is 34. So what I'm going to say, I'm saying the partial products, but I'm going to go ahead and add them in my head. And if you need help, come see me if you can't follow what I'm doing here. Okay. So this one is a 2 by 2. This is a 2 by 2. All right. My inside numbers are the same. So I'm going to end up with a 2 by 2. So when you do this, again, if you kind of put the numbers or put your blanks there if you need to, you know what you're working towards. First row, first column. Okay, so that is 1 times negative 3. So I have negative 3 plus 0 is negative 3. I have, uh, this is my first row, second column. So I'm doing first row, second column. 1 times 4 is 4 plus 2 times 0, which is 0. 4 plus 0 is 4. Second row, first column. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. So negative 6 plus negative 15 is negative 21. And then second row, second column, 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So 8 minus 6 is 2. And there you have it. Okay, 24, this is a 1 by 2, and this is a 2 by 2. Again, middle numbers are the same. What am I going to end up with is a 1 by 2. 
So that means I'm going to have one row and two columns. Negative 3 times 0 plus 5 times 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 plus 25 is 34. There's my matrix. All right, last one. Actually, I'll do it across here. Uh, this is a three rows by two columns. This is a two rows by two columns. Okay, middle numbers are the same. So I'm going to end up with a three by two. So again, three rows, one, two, three, by two columns. So it just kind of helps to know what you're working towards before you get into it. So first row, first column, one and negative one, that's negative one plus zero is negative one. One times zero is zero, zero times negative one is zero. Add those together. Uh, second row, first column, negative one and negative one give me positive one, negative five and zero give me zero. Positive one plus zero is one. Second row, second column, negative one times zero is zero. Negative five times negative one is positive five. Zero plus five is five. And then the last one, zero and negative one give me zero. Three and zero give me zero. Zero and zero give me zero. And then zero times zero is zero. Three times negative one is negative three. So we have finished our lesson on matrix multiplication.